Hello YouTube, Chance Paladin here, and doing another ITAR video uh, on the review of the new ITAR updates that are being proposed. Uh, I'm on part 6 now, I wasn't going to keep doing this because I, I don't, I didn't know if people are understanding it or not, but it looks like a couple people are watching this, so I want to keep going because I want to explain to people that, and show people that as long as this only applies to people with government contracts for military hardware or whatever, that it makes perfect sense. And for the rest of us, it makes no sense whatsoever. And I'm trying to explain that to everybody. But, so what I'm looking for in here is anything that would say that for some reason this is going to start applying or could apply to all of us. In which case, we're going to be in loads of trouble. So, anyway, let's get going. Number six. Proposed definition of technical data that arises during or results from fundamental research. The department proposes to move fundamental research from the definition of public domain in ITAR 120.11a8. Okay, so hold on. And so this is, this is more of the fundamental research talking about information that comes up during research that is proprietary. The thing I was trying to say is that the initial information that led them to the research, things that you would normally learn in school, like how to do the research is fine, but once you get into proprietary territory, so I suppose if somebody, sorry, cat on keyboard, if somebody figures out how to make something, how to manufacture something, then that becomes proprietary, confidential. But um, ba basically it's saying that it's not going to be illegal to know all of the education level publicly aware information but once you actually know the confidential parts of how to make something or if you figure it out then it's going to be subject which which is pretty standard honestly otherwise nobody would be allowed to go to school anymore so to find technical data arises during or results from fundamental research and then they're going to make a new ITAR 120.49 that'll probably explain that in more detail. It basically says, it's okay to go to school, you know, it's okay to do random research on stuff, but if you happen upon duplicating something that's already controlled, then you're getting into controlled territory. So that makes sense. The department believes that information that arises during is conceptually distinguishable from the information that would be captured in revised definition of public domain that is proposed in the rule. Yeah, they're just saying doing doing research on a project that's confidential is going to be different than what is currently public domain, which is just knowledge that everybody already has. Accordingly, the department proposes to address this concept with its own definition. The new definition of technical data that arises during or results from fundamental research is consistent with the prior ITAR 120.11.8 that we just read, except the department has expanded the scope of eligible research to include research that it that is funded in whole or in part by the US government. So, yeah, if the US government in whole or in part is funding any sort of research, then that could get lumped in, which is weird because I don't know how them funding something, like solely giving money, is the same as 
actually providing any sort of technical data that you'd be able to mess up, accidentally break some kind of law. So, but again, if you have a government contract, which is basically what this is code for, then you need to be extremely careful anyway. So, I, I, yeah, I still looks like government contract only stuff. So let's see, revised definition of export. The department proposes to revise the definition of export in ITAR 120.17. Hold on. All right, so here's 120.17 export. Sending or taking defense articles out of the United States by physical travel. Transferring registration. Yeah. Disclosing. I think this is more code for don't pull a Snowden. Uh, don't pull a WikiLeaks. And... But on a more <laughs> obvious level, don't sell our equipment to foreign entities that is not on the list you know you can sell things to Israel you can sell things to the UK and there's a there's a couple other countries that we have direct military uh, pacts with and then there's kind of a middle ground where it could be a dual use and then there's the absolutely knows so so that's what the export is now so let's see Uh, to better align with the AR's revised definition of the term and to remove activities associated with defense articles, further movement or release outside the U.S. Ah, which is going to be called re-export. Is there a re-export in 129? Oh, there is. Okay. Re-export or retransfer means the transfer of defense articles or defense services to an end use and user or destination not previously authorized by the license written approval or exemption pursuant to the subchapter. So this one's really important. That means, let's say, if we have a pact with Mexico. I've just been reading so much about Mexico lately. We'll just use that. I don't know what our agreements are with them. <clears throat> but basically, if we sold or exported something to the like military to the Mexico government, they're not allowed <laughs> to re- sell that product so and, and unless <clears throat> unless I guess they are also on the list or if there's some kind of approval process and that's of course to make sure that the bad guys don't get stinger missiles and all kinds of other really heavy stuff that they're not that are that are threat multipliers or uh, force multipliers it's like stinger missiles and 50 cals and other really really heavy stuff that we just cannot allow the bad guys to have so okay so this definition is revised to explicitly identify that ITAR 12616 and 12617 which are uh, more treaty exemptions have their own definitions of export, which apply exclusively to those exemptions. Yeah, that makes sense. It also explicitly references the new 120.49 activities that are not exports, re-exports, or retransfers, which excludes from ITAR control certain tra transactions. So, don't know what that is. I guess we'll, that'll be another thing that we have to find out after this gets approved, or whatever baloney. So, also, uh, by the way, at the review of this specific video, uh, some more of the TPP, the trade, has been canceled with a, a <laughs> with a, the unintentional help of the Democrats turning on each other, Pelosi and Clinton turning on Obama, um, because they want their own trade deal. So. I don't know how much of that is going to change this, but 
a lot of this export and trade stuff, I wouldn't be surprised if this is going to have to be rewritten Oops. After, after that. Because less and less of this is starting to look scalable if they go with something other than TPP, which could just overwrite it. So I'm also keeping that in mind. So paragraph A1 is revised to parallel the definition of export. In proposed paragraph uh, 7313 of the EAR, although the wordings change, the scope of the controls is the same. The provision accepting travel outside the U.S. by persons whose personal knowledge includes technical data is removed. So this makes sense because it's basically saying that anybody with technical data in their head is going to be okay to leave the U.S., but you still won't be able to tell anybody anything, which is obvious more like Snowden stuff, basically. So I, I can see why they're updating that. There's been some spy issues. Uh, MI6 just had to pull a bunch of spies out of some areas, too. So they this is extremely um, sensitive to them. Um, and then the other reason why it's sensible is... Er, I, I forgot what I was, what word I was going to use, but sensible works, is because whistleblowers under our current regime have been treated extremely poorly, and there's been a, an unprecedented crackdown on whistleblowers. So, this looks like an even further clarification on that and then from a more pragmatic side I would say because we keep having certain security departments leaving the country and having giant hooker parties and which has been documented over and over and over and over and over and so there's all kinds of ways they can lose technical data during their giant hooker parties also so um, I can see why they are further defining that. So, paragraph A2 includes the control listed in the current 120.17A4 transfers of technical data to a foreign person. Yet, the proposed revisions replace the word disclosing with releasing. <clears throat> and if you can think of, like, you know, WikiLeaks or whatever, Snowden basically releasing, like, electronic documentation, you can kind of see that. And the paragraph is otherwise revised to parallel proposed paragraph A2 of 734.13 of the AR releases newly defined concept 120.50 that encompasses the previously undefined term disclosed. So that makes sense. The problem I see with this, though, is if you think of the Internet and you think of the United States' Internet, and I wish I could draw some pictures and stuff here, but I didn't install the, some of the software I needed to do that. Um so you'll have to imagine it, that the United States' internet, the servers are physically held here, and the infrastructure keeps the data inside the U.S. Let's pretend it does, even though that's not really how the internet works. Stuff just flies everywhere, depending on where the servers are. Then you could see that data is not technically getting disclosed to outside the U.S., although it's not like our internet keeps the data here unless it's on some kind of private network that's uh, encrypted and stuff so that that's where one of the issues can be <clears throat> if social media is releasing something it being released really implies more of you know documents getting released where they can be retained whereas disclose is kind of like if you read something <clears throat> but you don't actually get to save the information so this really does look like some internet f updating to how like wikileaks could post all the documents and then replicate them to tons of servers and then Nobody can get them off again. Um, again, whistleblowing stuff is what it looks like.
but also government secrets and government processes encryption and other spy procedural stuff that you that <clears throat> that are either going to jeopardize current activities and missions or that could endanger our troops abroad like what happened with the Abu Ghraib pictures getting released and the Guantanamo pictures getting released and there's like two or three other prisons I can't even remember them all um It was all relating to torture, which I guess could be technical and proprietary, and that's caused all kinds of issues too, so maybe that is also a difference between disclose and and um, release. I don't know. They don't specify, but I'm sure it includes all that. Paragraph A3 includes the control listed in the current one. 2017 A2, the transfer registration control of ownership to a foreign person or aircraft, vessel or satellite. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I still haven't seen where basically you can't transfer it from like computer to computer. So I don't know if that's an oversight or if I just haven't got there yet, but it looks like it's heading in that direction. So. You can't, how would you, I, I wonder if that means that our satellites, that the U.S.'s satellites are, okay, so you can't sell an aircraft or any kind of boat or ship or satellite. Interesting, so since the satellites don't really move a whole bunch, um, yeah, I can see how that would be an issue if you had a satellite over a sensitive area and some, and then somebody gave it to China or something. Um, okay, okay. Paragraph A include A4 includes the control list in the current one, 2017, transferring the United States to four embassies. Is that okay? Hold on, 120.17A3. Yeah, that's basically talk about talking about diplomatic um, procedures. So, I guess if you watched a lot of Burn Notice or something, or the Born, the Born series, or there's actually a lot of spy type shows. I think Red, or maybe is it Red? Yeah. So not sharing things with other uh, yeah okay other embassies so paragraph A4 yep foreign embassies okay paragraph A5 maintains the control on performing a defensive service performing a defensive service on behalf or the benefit huh hmm Okay, so, like, we're doing security in Iraq again for the, I don't know, time. So, I guess that constitutes an export. Which is interesting. I never thought of that before. So, I wonder how that works for military contractors, private, private military contractors. I mean, they use civilian equipment. I don't know. And I wonder about training. I notice this doesn't bring up training. Alright. Uh, maybe we'll get to training later, so that's defensive services. Paragraph A6 is added for the release or transfer of dec decryption keys, passwords, And other items identified in the new paragraph A5 of the revised definition of technical data in 12010. Yeah. Decryption keys and passwords and stuff, that's going to be a an absolute mess. Because that has already been a huge problem, even here in the States. That's... 
I don't even know why they put this in here because I don't know but but this reminds me though going back to earlier talking about Abu, the Abu Ghraib pictures and all the other pictures that stuff fell under the military because of the torture processes and protocols but it also reminds me of that North Korea movie The Interview which obviously wasn't anything military related it's Hollywood related but the military ended up and the uh, politics ended up getting very involved so makes me wonder if the if under ITAR they could have stopped the interview from releasing I don't know that was unfortunately we didn't have enough time to have that discussion before everything went sideways but um, these decryption keys and passwords fall along the same boundaries where where it says technical data they can't be any decryption keys or passwords of technical data but we already know that that's not an ITAR thing that's like a homeland security thing it seems like so I'm not sure how how much water this really holds I, I guess it's just trying to keep our technical data decryption keys and passwords away from everybody else but it it just further I think gives them the controls on decryption keys and passwords saying they can't um, export them and encrypt them Yeah, I could probably talk about that for just a couple hours by itself. Because if you already have a, just like everything else I've been saying, if you already have a government contract, this is a no-brainer. And this is already in all of your rules that you agree to. Um, but for the rest of us, I think we're under like a different set of rules being a part of the, the uh, peasant, peasant class. I think our decryption keys and passwords don't mean squat to them, so. But but theirs do, but again, because if if they're building some military thing, or, you know, a list of all the spies or whatever, which I know there's been a lot of Hollywood movies about that, you don't want that information getting out because it jeopardizes lives in technical data so yeah, paragraph a6 the definitions of exports and re-export and this rule and the BAS companion rule present different formulations for this control and agencies request input from the public on which language more clearly describes the control yeah I bet they do the agencies intend however that the act of providing physical access to unsecured technical data subject to ITAR will be a controlled event and I think this is why everybody keeps getting upset about these ITAR updates because it looks like ITAR keeps trying to work itself into the rest of us and if I'm working on a government project I already or military project I already know I'm gonna be under ITAR and that's obvious and I'm okay with that because I've worked under tons of bill specs and stuff, but not knowing what can become ITAR in the future, this is this is concerning because you know I don't encrypt anything because I know it's not worth the hassle when they can just get into it. And I have passwords, obviously, to just keep the other honest people out. 
because I know the more you encrypt something, the more suspicious they get, and I don't have anything to hide. So I don't know how much the community can really, the civilian community can really add to this, because it's not like we have any leverage. They can just decrypt our stuff whenever they want. So, the mere act of providing access to unsecured technology subject to the AR will not be a controlled event unless it's done with the knowledge that such provision will cause or permit the transfer of controlled technology and cleared text or software to foreign national. And this is already restated from earlier, basically saying if you don't know and it's not identified at all, that you should be fine. But since they haven't said how this stuff's going to be identified or not identified, that doesn't, I don't trust that at all. Uh, if it's some kind of technical drawing, they need to come up with new identification and, and branding. And then I'd be more okay with it if they say, if anything has this branding on it. Like, oh, okay, that's reasonable. We just won't talk about anything if it's got the branding on it, or if we do, we do so at our own risk under ITAR, but... <sighs> There's no identification here, which concerns me from a documentation standpoint. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sign off on, on any of that stuff until they can tell us what the identification is supposed to be. Paragraph A7's added for the release of information to a public network such as the internet. Here we go. This is what I've been looking for. This makes more explicit the existing control in A4, which includes the publication of technical data to the internet due to its inherent accessibility by foreign persons. Now, notice it doesn't say by foreign networks. So, <laughs> because so many foreign people are led into the United States for whatever reason, they can all get on the internet having it on our internet or the US's internet pretending that that would actually work wouldn't matter since people can just get in I mean an illegal doesn't need an, an internet login and password tied to like a social security number and even if he did it's not like you could prove it was him or her without some kind of crazy DNA test but even then I mean they could just carry someone else's blood around or some insanity or I don't know. I mean, that gets in, that gets way too detailed. And our, our systems would be hundreds of years away from being able to um, check all that in a, in a public terminal. Which, again, is why this stuff is usually ITAR facility only. Because ITAR facilities can control this stuff. Which is why the data is safe there. You don't try to control the internet because you can't so instead they're just trying to say nothing can go on the internet this means that before posting information on the internet you should determine whether the information is technical data and I think this is where everybody keeps getting upset because there's no way to know and you says you should review the uh, munitions list which I'm sorry but the munitions list is so Let's look it up again. Let's look at it again together. Yeah, so here's the munitions list. I'll skim I'll skim over the jargon. But it's basically significant military equipment, which is kind of a no brainer. Missile control regime, which missiles but this is probably the one that's got everybody irritated non-automatic and semi-automatic firearms up to 50 cal fully automatic firearms up to 50 cal firearms or other weapons example insurgent in, in bleh, insurgency counterinsurgency close assault weapon systems Having a special military app. What is this special military application? 
combat shotguns. Which there's lots of shotguns with barrels less than 18 inches, so silencers, mufflers, <laughs> sound and flash suppressors. Okay, I can see that. Rifle scopes manufactured to military spec. What? <clears throat> there's that's like yeah, ah, it's like all of them. Barrel cylinders, receivers, frames, or complete breech mechanisms for the articles. Okay. Components, parts, accessories, and attachments for the articles and paragraphs. Technical data. That's where we get into the technical data stuff again. The following interpretations explain and apply the terms used in the category firearm is a weapon not over 50 cal, which is designed to expel a projectile. Yeah, 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 yeah. A rifle is a shoulder firearm, which can discharge a bullet. Yeah, yeah. Carbine's a lightweight shoulder fire. Yeah, okay. Pistol's hand operated firearm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Revolver. Okay, so machine gun. Machine pistol. Machine gun. Yep, yeah, full auto, okay. This covers by guns and armament, guns over 50 cal. Yeah, okay, so you can't have howitzers. Sorry, guys. That would be so much fun, though. Flamethrowers, so you're not allowed to have flamethrowers, I guess. Just, I've heard people talk, talking and joking about this one before. Like, <laughs> How flamethrowers. Oh my gosh. Okay, flame, yes. So nobody, you guys, flamethrowers, yes. Okay. Apparatus and devices for launching. Okay, so. Is that like grenade launcher tubes, I guess? Rendering mission abort of a target. <laughs> Rendering mission abort of a target. I like that. Okay, tooling and equipment, uh, parts, parts and subcomponents and component systems, and then there's all the ammo here on the right side. So I think that this is where people get the most concerned because I don't know how you're supposed to read the munitions list and figure out if something is technical data or not when if everything on the munitions list is considered sensitive then nobody would able nobody would be able to talk about it ever again without approval <sighs> and that's where the commodity jurisdiction comes in where you have to ask for approval before you can post anything to the internet, posting technical data to the internet without department authorization is a violation of ITAR. Defense articles. So that's the munitions list, but it doesn't say... That is just a... So keep in mind, this is only a list of each defining munition. It's kind of like a a dictionary, sort of. For a, this isn't saying these things are good or bad. It's just it's just saying what they are. So we have common terms. Now it's silly that they call them assault, this and that, and the other hoo ha. And <laughs> insurgency, counterinsurgency, it's like, are you guys talking about AKs or what? Um, silly. Basically, things that people would be able to use to resist for whatever reason. And then basically saying that anything over 50 cal is 
very large. <laughs> and stop stop calling anything over a fifty cal a gun, basically, because it's like a some sort of a cannon or howitzer or something, if if you can understand that. Or yeah. So it's not saying these things are bad. This is just a a munitions list. That's all it is, for better or for worse. Agree with it or not. And so it's only saying that before you talk about anything on the internet, you need to review the munitions list and make sure you're not releasing technical data. But again, like, so, that would lead me to believe, though, since in some states these things are legal, in some states these things aren't, it makes me wonder if they're going to say that you, it's okay to talk about M16s, M16A1s or whatever in states where you're allowed to own one as a citizen and like the 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 YouTube channel that disassembles it and tells you how to clean it or whatever or explaining how the reciprocating systems work on it if 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 it's okay in some states but not others like, if you can have ITAR state by state. I mean, because when you base it off... When you base it off a munitions list that already exists, it doesn't define military versus non-military. I mean, the military could use, theoretically, whatever it wanted under whatever agreements it's fighting under. Which is why it doesn't make sense when things like anthrax get sent everywhere. So, I don't know. I mean, my common sense tells me, obviously, if you have a confidential stealth bomber in your backyard that you're not allowed. And I know nobody with any common sense at all would do that. Because it's it's obvious. You know, if you found all the technical details on how to make our military armor and how to circumvent all of our military armor, people wouldn't do that because they're smart. But then when you turn around and have stuff like when the YouTube channels are playing around with bulletproof glass or when they're playing around with different AR-500, st stuff from AR-500 and Spartan and some of the other ones if that stuff's going to military troops then I, I wonder if that could I mean that's all failure mode torture test stuff on equipment and there's torture test stuff on like those water water bladder backpacks and things so that could become technical data even though it's stuff that any Joe average Joe YouTube channel could figure out how to play with so I wonder if that's they would be they would be generating technical data they would be potentially exporting technical data or what do they call it I try to use the right words here publicly available Dissemination, yeah. Oops. 
Yeah. I mean, although some YouTube channel stress testing the new armor for fun and amusement isn't fundamental research, because you can assume that stuff's already happened. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but it's not like they would get some confidential military armor for, like, the Humvees or MRAPs or tanks or whatever and start playing with that. Because I don't even think you're allowed to have that stuff. I mean, that's so tightly controlled. I don't know. And again, if I don't know it, most people aren't going to know it. Um, and it's certainly not written here. So... I'm going to, yeah, it's basically say if you export, or if you export technical data to even one foreign person, it's considered automatically an export to every single country uh, that the person has citizenship or permanent residency to, which makes sense, because that's all more spy stuff. <sighs> um... Or espionage, or whatever you want to call it. So I don't know. I um. That's not. Again, that's not the smoking gun, so to speak. But this is yet another astronomical concern that this shouldn't go forward until this is explained. Because I get what technical data is. And I get what exporting is. And I have a fairly good idea of what the internet is. But. There's no way to know. With any definitive certainty. Besides some of the common sense stuff. Like. You can't put on the internet how to make stinger missiles. Because that. You know. Is such a force multiplier. I get that. And you can't be in you can't be releasing information that would endanger people but but knowing that a 50 cal takes out a piece of 3a <laughs> armor doesn't really put anybody at risk since nobody would not it can't do that I'm just saying that doesn't jeopardize anybody there isn't some insurgent somewhere going oh I haven't been shooting them with my 50 cal because I thought that their armor plate could stop it. Now I know it can't. Or what? I mean, that wouldn't happen. So, <laughs> unless the guy's really, really stupid. But I, I don't think they even think like that. So, I don't know. But then what about Mythbusters? Bec I mean, that show, they do all kinds of military and gun and explosive stuff. I mean it it's just this this reaches far beyond common sense and it doesn't clarify it. Cuz I think, you know, 99.99% people know that there's some things you just wouldn't talk about because it's just obvious. Like this is how to make a claymore with your 3d printer or some i don't you wouldn't you wouldn't do that because it, it's dangerous and then there's been very you know different quote-unquote cookbooks military and um improvised that i won't talk about a lot of that stuff's still on the internet but that stuff is is only covered here on the munitions list to the point that any explosive is and you're already not supposed to talk about making explosives anyway see here's category five uh, explosives and energetic materials propellants and your agents and their constituents 
you already can't talk about this stuff anyway. It's only here is definition. And... And I'm sure somewhere on here, biological stuff is on here too. You know, you can't say... You can't talk about anthrax and all that craziness. But just look at all the different explosives that are on this list. And all that stuff's floating around on the internet. And and people have been having problems with um, their... Oh my gosh, I forgot the name of it all of a sudden. Yeah, uh, Tannerite. Look at all the YouTubers that have had freaking problems with Tannerite, even though civilians are allowed to have that. I don't know exactly where Tannerite is on here because I don't know a ton about explosive stuff, but I know that you can't talk about it, and you certainly can't make YouTube channels that would show everybody how to do it. But I'm sure they're out there. So... I mean, are they going to make all that stuff ITAR? Here, here's the thing. They don't say. They they don't. And everybody says, oh, guns kill more people than anything, blah, blah, blah. Well, no. Explosives kill way more people. And, and don't even get me started on swimming pools, rivers, lakes, ponds, oceans, and five-gallon buckets, you know, bathtubs. Hot tubs, you know, uh, deep puddles, and so I don't see them controlling explosives, even though that's on the ordinance, and even though I mean you can level cities with explosives, which we know, which is why things like backpack nukes are just scared the living crap out of everybody. And I'm not sure if in there anywhere it talks about EMPs, so which is always a real threat now. So it it all goes back to if they would just say if you're under an ITAR, ITAR contract, these are the rules. If you're a civilian and you see anything with this stamp on it, then turn it into the authorities because you somehow stumbled across ITAR, ITAR controlled stuff. And then at least then we could have a conversation where they say, oh, uh, by the way, these are the things we're going to control. Um, bunker, bunker busters and nukes and whatever. We can, we at least talk about it. But saying you can't have, if they did something so like, say you can't have flamethrowers, what does that mean? You can't have a lighter anymore? Or like aerosol cans, those are propellants. I, I mean, you see how, if you forget about guns for a second, you could see how many other things this also affects. So... I'm starting to see how ITAR could creep into all of our lives, even not under government contracts. And and I think you're right if you'd say that we wouldn't have any way to know it until it was too late. Um, where either the information would get taken down or it would be subject to a review and who knows how long that would take because they can't even deal with what they have now. So it's... Social Security, unemployment, the IRS. It's all backed up. And um, they can't handle anything else. So I, I can't foresee them reviewing all this. Which is why... Since ITAR's already working fine for what it... For what it's supposed to do... You know, I believe that Homeland Security just needs to put a freaking list together and say you know don't don't talk about our military armor which is this 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 if you guys want to play with your civilian armor go ahead 
our military people have it, but they already know what the technical data is, so it's not an issue. It's not secret. That's, you know, public, public domain, so it's okay. So... And, and they say, you know, we'll, we'll tell you what's, what's going to be in public domain. I talked about that in one of the earlier videos. But they're not going to. That, that information isn't anywhere. There's no list of what's public domain <laughs> in terms of, of ITAR stuff that's public domain. And then that gets back into the whole thing they brought in early on of how can something be ITAR and public domain at the same time? That doesn't... Oh, it's just so confusing, guys. So, anyway. Um, if you want me to keep going, please let me know. Because this is extremely dense information. It kills my voice. And um, this makes my brain work massively over time. I have to take a lot of breaks. Because this information is just so dense. So... If you want me to keep going, please leave a comment, because I can't tell if this stuff is being well-received or not. I don't need a bunch of, bunch of validation to stroke my ego, because I know I am not the expert. But the fact that nobody else is doing it makes me feel like I have to. So at least somebody's doing it. Please let me know if you want me to keep going on this because I'm only on I only just finished part 7 guys there's a lot to go so please let me know all right or if this gives you a good enough idea now of what we're looking at okay so thanks for watching like subscribe tell your friends and talk to you later bye